Hello and welcome to another video coaching session. Now, in this section, we're going to focus on grouping. Project allows you to group inf information, which is a variation of sorting and filtering. And this is a very important technique to understand in order to create dashboards and views. So we're going to take a look at creating groups and using combination views. Let's get started. All right, now we're looking at grouping. Grouping is a variation of the sorting and filtering that we've already reviewed. And basically, grouping does not assign an order to the task or hide any tasks from views like sorting does. So you can use uh, predefined groups. Um, tasks can be grouped in a number or a predefined ways based on the type of view that you're in. And to group tasks based on whether they are um, on the critical path, you would do, for example, the following. First, you would select a task view that you want to work in. And uh, right now, we're in the tracking Gantt view. There's a Gantt view. There are different views that you can select. So select the task view that you want to use. And then go to the menu option project and select group by. So it says group by here. Right now it says colon no group because I don't have a group selected. And you can see in the cascading menu the default group by options. You'll see here these are basically a list of predefined groups. And we can select the group that we want to apply. So in this case if we select group by critical then let me click on that. Now we can see here it says critical no and critical yes. And uh, I can scroll down. This is a short schedule here. There, there aren't a lot of tasks in it. But now it has grouped the tasks by critical. Project has added uh, headings for each of the groups. And the groups are you know, highlighted by the yellow text here, so they're easy to see. You can collapse the groups. And uh, again, we selected for critical. Again, we went to project, selected group by, and then we selected a category. Now, let's say we wanted to group by milestones. Okay, So anything that's a milestone now is appearing in the milestone yes section. Anything that's not a milestone, all the task and critical tasks are appearing in the milestone no section. And again, we can collapse these or expand them as needed. To uh, turn grouping off, you would basically just go back to the project menu item, select group by, and then select the menu item, no group. And that's how you turn grouping off. Okay. Another quick way to do it is from the toolbar, the standard toolbar, you see here is a drop-down list for groups and you can select different types of groups. And if I can select critical, then it's groups by critical or I can select uh, milestone, which you already selected. And again, in this list, there's the option for no group, which turns the grouping off. So you can use your toolbar or you can go to the menu to select groups. Now let's take a look at grouping and usage views. First, what we need to do is uh, select a task usage or resource usage view. So let's go to the task usage view. And here we are. And from uh, a usage view like this, we can group on assignment fields by basically doing the following. When we go to the menu item project and select group by and go down to the bottom and select custom group by, the customize group by dialog box opens up. And here we can select the fields that we want to group. So first we're going to select the group assignment checkbox and 
So we select the field that we want to group by, and um, let's just say we're going to group by duration. Okay. Actually, it'll be easier. Let me select name. We're going to we're going to group by task name. We've selected the group assignment, not tasks checkbox. And in the field type column, which is over here, we select group by assignment or task. And in this case, we're going to leave it as task and leave the order in ascending order. And let's say we want to also group by outline number. So I could type outline number, okay, and make the field type an assignment and ascending. And then when we're done building how we want to group by, uh, and it gives you a choice to change the uh, font as well as the cell background, I'm going to leave everything as default, then just click on OK. And here you can see the group by that we just created in the task usage view. Okay, see it says custom group up here. And um, again, going back to the group custom group box, what we selected was grouping by task name and then by outline number. So these are the outline numbers and where you see in parentheses here, this is our task template, so we have parentheses here, but this is the task name. So it's grouping by task name and then by outline number. And this is, um, this particular task name is called add your task because <laughs> that's what we called it in our template. Um, but if you had other task names, you would see them listed here. And of course you can collapse them and, uh, you know, expand them as needed. Now, as you might have suspected, um, we're not limited by the groups that come already with Microsoft Project. We can actually create our own groups, and we call that the do-it-yourself groups. Um, we're going to walk through that right now. So to create your own group, you would basically do the following. First, let's go back to uh, no group. So to create your own group, you would go to the view that you want to use um, to group your tasks. Right now we're in the task usage view still. Um, we could go to the resource usage view just to make things a little bit different. Um, the resource usage view, if I collapse this, right now I have two resources in this schedule and it shows the task that they have. Um, so there's a task usage or resource usage view that we could use. And basically we'd go to the menu option, project, and again select group by. And select more groups. And here the more groups dialog box opens up. And we can click on task or resource group. So we're going to create a task group. Uh, again, this is our template, so all of our tasks simply say add your task because this is just a template. But on your schedule, you'd see a task names that you actually created. So the next step is to select a group name. So let's just say we're going to use the critical tasks group name. Actually, before I do that, let me let me go to um, the uh, Gantt chart view for a second and mark a few of these tasks 100% complete so that you can see something here. I'm just going to drag this down. Okay, there we go. So now going back to the task usage view, go to project, group, more groups, and let's select complete and incomplete tasks. We now have in this example some complete tasks that are 100% and some that are 0%. So the next thing we're going to do is now that we've selected a group name is we're going to click on the copy button 
in the More Groups dialog box. And when we select Copy, you can see now we're in the group definition in the project schedule name. We're in the group definition dialog box and it says the name is copy of and we had selected the group complete and incomplete tasks. We can rename this to whatever we want. But we need to, it's recommended to create a copy because whatever changes we do here to the group will be permanent. So it's always best to make a copy rather than changing the original um, uh, customize the original groups that come with project. So let's give a name to this. We're going to call this just for our sake test um, my group. Okay. So we've given a name. We want it to show in the menu. So we so this is selected because this is selected. It will show in the um, in the group by menu. And um, one other detail, in the, in the um, group by name, mine says test my group, but we could actually add an ampersand in the group name, which indicates that if you type um, a letter that's to the right of the ampersand, that's how you can quickly select the group from your menu. Okay. So we can assign an ampersand in the group name. So let me just go ahead and add a ampersand. And the letter T to the right of it will be the hotkey that will bring up that group. Now, in the uh, field name list box that we see here, you can select a field that you want project to group. In this case, percent complete is what we're looking at, which is we'll keep it that way. But you can see there are all sorts of different fields that come with project um, that you can select. But we're going to leave what we have here. And of course, the field type is a task, and the order is going to be either ascending or descending. We'll leave it as ascending. Um, you can also select a font for the group. You know, we're going to leave it as it is. And you can also change the cell background color. Let's make a different color just for the sake of this exercise. So you can choose different background cell background colors. And you can also change the pattern of the cell. Um, these are the patterns that are available. But uh, I'm going to leave the pattern as it is. And if you want to include summary task in your grouping, then select the show in summary option, which is down here, checkbox. And you can click the define group intervals button right here. And project displays the define group intervals dialog box. And you can set the grouping intervals that project uses. So, you know, these are the different intervals that project uses. I'm actually not going to change that. I'm going to leave it as, as it is, but it is an option that you can change. And again, this is an option that allows you to um, identify the intervals, um, you know, which you want project to group the fields by. So let me cancel out of here. And let's see, what else? For now, that's all we're going to do in this uh, for this particular group that we're creating. So we click on the OK button, and then click on the, see our, our new group is here, click on the Apply button. And now we've applied the group that we just defined. We can see here the percent complete is zero, and these are all the ones that are zero. If I scroll down, the percent complete is between 1 and 99. That means these are not done, so that's these, and then the ones that are done are here. Okay, so in our case, there wasn't much variety in terms of percent complete, but this is a good illustration. You can also see the background color that we selected, etc. Now, as you can see, my test group is now listed in the groups. And when I go to project group by, I see my test group listed here as well. 
So that's how you create your own group. Now let's take a quick look at using combination views. Let's go back to no group and uh, we'll just go to the Gantt chart view and just for variety I'm going to make uh, some of these tasks 50% One seventy-five. You know, just okay. Now, so for using combination views, in addition to the predefined views that come with Project, as we said before, you can create your own views, but you can also create combination views. And in a combination view, Project will literally split the screen into two sections. There will be a horizontal line that displays one view in the top and another view in the bottom. And uh, for example, if you go to the task entry view, uh, let's see, we don't have it listed here, so let's go down to more views and scroll down to task entry. We'll select that, click on apply, and this is a task entry view. It's a combination view. <clears throat> So in this view, we see the Gantt chart above, and we see the resource and predecessor information below. And again, in a combination view, the bottom pane displays the information about the task that's selected. So if we select a task, you can see the information changes below. So in a combination view, the bottom pane displays more detail about the uh, task that you've selected above in the top pane. To see the name of the view, um, you can literally look to the left hand side of the screen. And let me see if we can make this visible here. Hold on one second. I'm going to turn the view bar off. There we go. So this is saying task form over here on the left and Gantt chart over here on the top. So this tells you which, which um, what we're looking at in our views. Also notice that the active pane, like right now I have this cell selected, so this is the active pane, the upper part, because this cell is selected. The active pane will always have a darker bar over here. When I go down here, this is now the active pane. I just clicked on John Doe and now this bar is darker than this bar because it's the active pane. Okay, so that's one way to tell where you are. Now to display the combination view, basically you select a view and let me uh, turn my view bars back on. I'll go back to the Gantt chart view. I'm going to remove the split by going to Windows and selecting Remove Split. So let's say you're, you're in Project, you're in the Gantt chart view or some other view that you're in. And if you want to display a combination view, there are a couple of ways to do it. You can first select a view by going to the menu and choosing Window and then select Split. And Project literally splits the window displaying either a task form or resource form. So this is uh, our resource form down here. And again, if we go to view and remove the view bar, we can see, I'm sorry, this is a task form down here. I said resource form, it's a task form. And this is a Gantt chart above here. Okay, you can always change the form. Uh, let's say we want to select resource work. So that's resource work, resource schedule, uh, predecessor. You know, you can see how the form is changing as I select different types of views that are available. Okay. Um, so again, to display a combination view, go to the menu option window and split your view. Now ours is already split, so the only option is to remove the split. Once you split the view, you can click right click um, in the bottom half and change the view that you're looking at that you're working with. By default, resource predecessors will be the uh, view that you'll see in the bottom half. So anyway, when you click anywhere in the bottom pane, you can go to the menu and select, uh, I'm down here in the bottom pane, I can go to the menu view and select more views. 
and our More Views dialog box just opened up. And we can select a view. Uh, let's see. Hmm. We'll just say Resource Form. And then click on Apply. And now the Resource Form, which is what it says over here on the left hand side, appears in the bottom view. And with the resource form, when you right click, this menu will pop up and these are the other views that you can view within a resource form. So I can see cost, I can see my notes, I can see work, and again, when I select a different task, it will show the information for those tasks. Okay? So click anywhere in the bottom pane so that that is selected and go to the view menu option select more views and then choose whichever view you want to see in the bottom half okay and then click on apply now there's actually a shortcut to displaying a combination view and a quick and easy way to create a combination view first let me turn the split off and um, make I'm going to show our view bar okay we're in the Gantt chart view so a quick and easy way to create a combination view is when you move your pointer to the split bar that appears in the lower right corner, which is down here, you see down here, um, there's, a, there's like a little button thing, and when you put your mouse over it, your mouse will turn into a double um, arrow bar. So if you, if you double click, if I double click on this, it automatically splits it. Okay, I can also just drag it down again. Um, that's a quick way to split your screen. Another way is again move your mouse over it. Instead of double clicking, you can just drag it up, you know, however far you want it. And that's how you can see your split screen view. And again, drag it back down to remove it. Um, when it's split, you can double click on this bar and it removes the split. Okay, so this is another way to navigate to a, a combination view. You can also use the menu option when window remove split, which we already did. So window remove split removes a split and returns us back to the single pane view. All right, now let's look at customizing a view. So like everything else in project, there are a number of views that come with project, but we can change the default table that project displays for the view each time you display a view. You can make a copy of the default view and give it a new name that communicates what it shows and then you can make changes to that copy. So you can change the default view but I recommend that you make a copy so that you always go back and can use the default views. So to, to, to create your own custom view, you would do the following. Okay, basically go to the menu option view and select more views. And when the more views dialog box appears, click on the view that you want to use. Let's just leave it as it is. We're in the Gantt chart view. And the next thing that we'll want to do is, of course, make a copy. So when I click on copy, then the view definition dialog box pops up. And I can take type a name. So for now, I'm just going to call this test of Gantt chart. You may select the table from the table list. So we're in the entry table right now. And from the group list down here, right now it says no group, but um, we can select a group to apply to the view if we wanted to. And this shows all the groups. We created a group already, my test group. So we could select that or any other group that we wanted to. And then from the filter <coughs> list box that you see here, these are all the filters. And, you know, we can create our own filter as well and be able to select that here. So we can select everything that we want our uh, 
custom view to have. Another nice thing that I like to do is highlight the filter so that um, it's actually highlighted, but that's an option for you. You'll, you can see if you don't want highlighting, you don't have to select it. Um, show in menu, I like to show my view in my menu. And when you're done building your view, you click on OK. So you can see my test of Gantt chart is now a view. And I can click on the apply button down here. And I didn't make any changes to this view, which was kind of silly, but let me go back actually and um, make some change that so you can see. So I went back and clicked on edit. And let's say we're going to group by what we created in my test group and then click on OK. So my test group was by tasks. And if I scroll back up to the top here, hold on one second. OK, there we go. I'm scrolling back up to the top. We, we, we group by, in this view, the percent complete. So that's what this view is all about. And uh, we've now created a custom view that uses the Gantt chart and applies the grouping that we created. Now let's remove this, go back to a no group, and we're showing all tasks. Now, if you want to create a new combination view, you can do that as well. And um, basically, if you discover that you use the same combination view over and over and you want to select your own personal combination information um, from the view menu or from the view bar, then you'd do the following. You would basically go to the menu option view and select more views. And in the more view dialog box, you would click on new, the new button, and you see it's prompting you to define a new view. It'll be a single view or a combination view. We're going to select combination and then click on the OK button. And we're going to give the view a name. We'll just call it test my view, test my combo view. That's what we're going to call this. And in the top, we're going to select what we want to see. So uh, let's just say in the top, we're going to see the task usage view. And in the bottom, we'll see the resource usage view. We want it to show in the menu. And then we click on OK. And here's our test my combo view. I can click on apply. And here we have it. So I can click on a task and see the resource details below. Again, when I turn the view bar off, I can see the views that I have here, the resource usage or the task usage. These are the views in my new combination view that I just created. And if we go back to view, uh, more views, you know, again, you'll see your view there in the list. Likewise, if we turn the view bar back on, and uh, if I scroll down here, whoops, uh, resource usage, resource graph. Oh, here we go. Test my combo. See, this is our view that we created. So if I'm in, going back up, um, if I'm in the Gantt chart view, let me remove the window split. I'm um, working here and then I want to go to the combination view that I created. It's now in the menu over here and I can just click on it and it brings it right back up. Again, when you're in a split screen view, even though you navigate to a different view, the, the screen will stay split. So just double click on the bar to remove it, go to the, go to the window option, remo remove split or just drag the split down. Okay, so that's how you do that. So there you have it. Now, take a look at the homework below, and if you have any questions, feel free to open a ticket at INeedSupportPlease.com. And I'll see you in our next lesson.